You're listening to Radio Cosmos. All night long. Bravo! My cop almost let a lady. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. Break for 30 seconds. Come on, sir. You're now listening to Bad Radio. Hello and welcome to Bad Radio. Bad stands for Business at a Distance. This is a show about local businesses and business networking. We are here in the News Radio WFLA Orlando studios from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. I'm your host, Angela Smarito, and in studio with me, we have our producer, Melissa Fox. Happy July 4th weekend. Wow, four-day weekend. I know, <laughs> I know. Trust me, I know, because nobody's working. Uh, I know, right? <laughs> Taking an early holiday. Oh, my gosh. It's like trying to get stuff done right now, work-wise, has been just not happening. Not happening. Um, up next, we have Melissa Jacob with Striking Brand. Hello, hello. Mm-hmm. She is, <laughs> that is really sad applause. It's okay. You can do better than that. Yeah. There we go. Um, You know how those kids, they're not paid, okay? (laughs) Melissa is our co-host and our videographer. And if you go to badradio.com, you can see all the previous episodes of Bad Radio there because she does a beautiful job. And if you go to strikingbrand.com, you can see all of her other work because she is a photographer as well as a videographer. Um, We have a very special guest today. Please welcome Lauren Dolgery. The Garo. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, it, after it all that, you got one of those crazy names. Uh, you know what? It's like it's when you get put on the spot. You never. You can like recite it over and over again. Yeah, behind and the scenes here, I I asked like, how do you pronounce that? And we all got around and said it, and then I, blo- I blew. I blew it. it. You know yeah. what's funny though is I was so excited when I got married and I got to change my name from my maiden name, Roundsville. Oh. Yeah. So long. I was so excited. I'm like, oh yes, shorter name, easier to pronounce, winning. No, no. it works. <laughs> so much harder. <laughs> well, Lauren is with the House of Sol- Solandria. House of Solandria, yes. yes. And we are going to get into what exactly that means. Uh, but first, we're going to talk about Frogger's Bar and Grill. So if you're looking for a place to go with friends or meet new ones, then you're looking for Frogger's Grill and Bar. With four great locations, there is bound to be one near you. Come with friends or bring the family for some food and fun. And don't miss out on Frogger's amazing menu where everything is fresh Never frozen. Oviedo, Mount Dora, Apopka, Altamont Springs, Froggers, hopping with food and fun. All right. So next up, we have the networking news. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and can you can you do that read? Oh, sure. I'm so sorry. The networking <laughs> news is brought to you by Symphonic CBD, which is a branch of Live Your Live Your Best Life. They are both advocates for Green Compass Global. Green Compass products are USDA organic, lab tested, non GMO, made in the USA, and cruelty free. CBD products are key. For making calmness a habit. They also have CBD for our fur babies. To get more information on the benefits of CBD, visit symphonic-cbd.com. That's symphonic-cbd.com. Okay. All right. Now you're up. Now I'm up. I'm ready now. (laughs) Okay. All right. So this time I wanted to do something fun. We did a kind of like a questionnaire last time on, on networking. So this one's more, it's like a true or false. So you don't have to come up with the answer. You just get your 50-50. Well, you thumbs that up right. or thumbs down. Yes. Okay. Well, up. actually, this is radio, so we're probably yeah. not going to do that. The visual's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll do a true, true or false. Okay. So the first thing was uh, true or false. Networking is a new concept. Absolutely not. No, false. Yeah, that rah, one was rah, too rah. easy. Yeah. <laughs> That's too easy. False. Networking is not a new concept. It's been fundamental aspect of uh, professional and social interaction for centuries. So... This isn't new, even though for me, BNI feels new, even though that's not even new. I it's mean, a- I think that they've taken networking to a whole new level. Yeah, with digital, being able Absolutely. to digital aspect, yeah. you can do so much more. But I think that networking probably was around before advertising was around. That I mean, makes sense. I would think so. I think networking probably existed since the dawn of time because people did group together. They banded together. They created partnerships to Need have this one's more. Like, this one's and like, I guess that's just a really yeah. rudimentary form yeah. of networking. It's like, when I got the fish, to... you got the rice, yeah. you got whatever our trade's going to be, yeah. and we're going to get together, and they're going to be like, ooh, Lauren, she's got the best rice yeah. in town. <laughs> you need to go use Lauren. Yep. That's true. Bartering, when you have the barter system, yeah. you need to know who you're going to. You need to know some people. Love it. Love it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. Okay. Um, The next one is true or false. Networking helps build business connections just for like established businesses. Okay, I'm going to go false false with that one, too. All day. False all day. Networking is a valuable tool for building business connections, regardless of whether you are established or in your early stages. Um, Honestly, I think it 
it could be even more beneficial if you're in your beginning stages because you don't have those connections yet. And if you get out there and start building your network, that's yeah. how you're going to start growing. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're a perfect example right. of that because your business was just starting and BNI has kind of like changed the face of it yeah, for you. Brand new, brand yeah. new. So all BNI was like my starter pack to my networking. So, so that really helped. Well, fun. think of even students. You know, they're going to look for internships or apprenticeships or a university or a job. What's a great way to do that? And probably we meet something that you wouldn't have found online. Mm-hmm. Like, Networking. Yeah. Right. Are you chamber events or even being chamber a guest? Chamber events yeah. or, you know, some of the RIAs, the real estate groups. Mm-hmm. If you wanted to be an agent. Um, there's also some business groups where we get together and we discuss strategy. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of resources now. And it's really opened up people's. Yeah. I can't, you can't even say backyards anymore. Yeah. Um, because the entire world is your backyard. You just need Pretty to much. know kind of how to search it and mm-hmm. press a button. Well, my daughter Anna is 18 and she works, she owns, I mean, she runs Symphonic CBD that I just did that mm-hmm. read for and mm-hmm. she joined a BNI group. And I know part of her, she's 18, I know part of her is like, why? I, these are all these people are talking about mortgages and stuff like that. I'm like, Anna, this is all <laughs> stuff that is going to mean so much more because she's going to get a business degree. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you're going to be so far advanced on some of your, you know, your your co-students or whatever you want to call them, your, your what whatever, they? other what students that um, that you're going to be like, you're starting peers. early. Yeah, peers. <laughs> peers. Thank there you. Go. I'm like, what do you call your co-students? <laughs> co-students. You know what we mean. <laughs> So, yes. Yes. Um, okay, awesome. So, the next one is not working with me. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But I meant all difficult. I did like the fact that you <laughs> that up. I was waiting for that to happen. <laughs> oh, buzz. Okay. Time's up. I got it. Okay, true or false, there are more men active in networking than women. I'd say no. I don't know. I, wa- I want to say true. I say false. This one didn't give me an exact answer. I think that they're just trying to kind of be like, you know. I think because women are more social. I would think that too. So it says historically there have been more men active in networking than women, which kind of makes sense because historically there'll be more men men business owners than women. But I think that that's changing. I agree. It's definitely changing. Um, Because, yeah. There are 38 million businesses owned in the States now are owned by women. Mm -hmm. Did you Um, say 38 million? believe that's the number off the top of my head yeah. without going on yeah. google search <laughs> chat gpt hello mm-hmm. um yeah so i would totally say that it's definitely changing because yeah i mean back in the day men were the business they were the ones that were going to you know going to work they were the ones running the businesses mm-hmm. and whatnot so now it's totally different especially even for like the businesses that women do online they still do their at home stuff but then they work like right you know doing whatever it is online like live your best life or mm-hmm. any of those those that I mean Terry goes to more networking meetings than anybody I know. <laughs> so Okay. And then if you think of your B and I chapter, I mean there's I think it's mixed for me. Mine is boss babe heavy for sure. Okay. That's one of the reasons why I joined it. I know you you came to my chapter one time mm-hmm. too. Yeah. And I mean we have heavy hitters in there like like um Jennifer Andrews who sponsors the show, um Andrews Law PA, she's a trial attorney. Um, we have Rachel Roach, which Rachel Roach Realtor. We mm-hmm. have Lizzie Barasa with New York Life. So we do, ours tends to um, skew more female. But I mean, like you said, the men hold their own as well. But mm-hmm. I think that ours is more female. So yeah, so I, I guess that's, tides are changing on that. Mm-hmm. All right, so true or false is going to be the last one. Networking doesn't work unless you do it all of the time. False. False. It is false. I thought it was going to say true. I thought it was going to say, yeah, you got to be consistent and keep on doing that and nurture and grow it. But it said false. While networking consistently can be beneficial, it's not necessary to engage in networking activities all the time for it to be effective. It's about building, maintaining relationships, and the quality of those relationships is more important than the quantity or frequency of networking events. I think that I've had situations where I went to a networking event and I met somebody and and we made a connection, but then we kind of like went different ways. Mm -hmm. And then a year later, they reached back out to me and we ended up closing business together. You know what I mean? So it did take some time. Love those boomerang sales. Uh (laughs) I know. I have a good story for you when we get back from break. Okay. Speaking of that, we are going to break right now. And when we get back, we are going to learn what House of Solandria mm-hmm. really means. So stay tuned. Ah, uh, yes. Stay tuned. It's Bad Radio on News Radio WFLA Orlando. 
Welcome back to Bad Radio, brought to you by Premier Couple Superstore, because a couple that plays together stays together. Welcome back to Bad Radio, and this part of the show is brought to you by Premier Couple Superstore. It is hot, hot, hot out there, so best to plan some inside activities. But first, a trip to Premier Couple Superstore. They have the best selection of lingerie, shoes, toys, games, love oils, club wear, and so much more. You won't pay those high prices because you'll be going directly to the source. 5009 South OBT or shop online at premiercouples.net because a couple that plays together stays together. Oh, yeah. That's right, baby. You know Premier Couples Superstore? I think I've been there, yeah. <laughs> it's a fabulous place. Um, and like I said, it's so hot that you got to plan things to do inside. So you go there, you pick up some stuff, you go home. Um, actually, that reminds me, we have a commercial to cut after this. Okay. All right. So we're here with Lauren with the House of Solo. So. I'm going to get it wrong again. So, Laundria. So, -hmm. first and foremost, welcome to the show, Lauren. Thank you. Um, It's an honor. Lauren and I have known each other for a couple years now, and she actually uh, attended the first bad anniversary party, um, which was, what, two years ago now? That was two years ago. That was so much fun. Yeah. Yeah. I'm actually thinking about doing another one. Um, I'm probably going to do a Froggers in Oviedo, but I just have to figure out a time that works. So, um, I think it's due. It's way overdue. When it's cooled down? Probably. Maybe not 142. Yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, but so we, like I said, we've been acquaintances ever since. And I always am inspired by the stuff that she posts because everything that she does is very uh, supportive, especially when it comes to women in business. And I love that. You know me. I'm mm-hmm. like, I'm all about. <laughs> right. I'm all about my, si- my sisterhood. Mm-hmm. But first and foremost, tell us what, where did you come up with the name of House of Solandria? So I have a an interesting story. I've I've lost it all. I've gained it all. I've lost it all. Um, I've had traumatic brain injury. So I kind of always sort of identified with a phoenix Mm -hmm. coming out of the ashes of the sun. Um, So when we were coming for uh, thinking of a brand name for the family, Mm -hmm. it just it kind of seemed to work and everyone in the family really liked it. Uh, I love our logo. I'm super excited about that. Mm -hmm. Uh, But House of Salandria is a family of brands uh, that is geared to solving obstacles, problems, obtaining solutions for both individuals and business owners. Uh, Like Angela had mentioned, I do specialize in working with women. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I am a woman. And, you know, it's still sad to say, but a lot of times we still come up against the the gender inequalities, particularly when it comes to banking, mm-hmm. money, capital um, for our businesses, which is a lot of times why you see many women struggling to get their business off the ground, to get it to the next level, mm-hmm. to get the capital they need to get the inventory, the equipment, the marketing, whatever the case is. Right. And that shouldn't be like that in 2023. Well, I guess I started this years ago, but now 2023. Right. It shouldn't be like that for any certain reason. And we were talking about networking. Mm-hmm. You know, even the face of networking has changed over millennia. Mm-hmm. Um, doing business has gone virtual. So that's changed. So it's only natural that women are going to be coming into a new space and working together, coming together as a family to really elevate each other each other's businesses, but also really aid in serving our communities. Um, our mission is to elevate the socioeconomic status of humanity as a whole. Uh, and that means societies, communities, and keeping families together. Does that answer that portion of the question? I think it's fantastic. Because <laughs> you know what it makes me think of? is like I went to an event called 100 Women Strong. Are you familiar mm-hmm. with that organization? I've heard of it, yeah. Yeah. And they were talking about the inequalities of pay versus men versus women. Mm-hmm. And they gave us an example about um, two, two equal people, one went for a job. One was a man, one was a woman. The guy, it was, the, it was paying whatever, $100,000. The guy went in and said, I want $115,000. Mm-hmm. The woman went in there and said, I'll do for 60. But they did, oh. she didn't know that it yeah. was $100,000. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She was just trained in her head to lowball it because she didn't feel that she could ask for more. Yeah. So, of course, they're going to hire her and pay her $60,000. But you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. She could have could have got $100,000. Right. 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 Yeah. But, I mean, it wasn't so much them as it was her that mm-hmm. went in with that mindset of, I'm not worth right. what. I think a lot of that comes from all our culture right historically right. I know I like t- we mentioned that it's changing right uh, but we were kind of brought up in in it 
our moms, our parents, yeah. their grandparents. And I don't know how that, I mean, it's just like how you said, it's historical because I feel like, so my, my, my parents divorced and then my mom um, didn't remarry, but she's like super independent mm-hmm. and has like super strong, been able to do all of her stuff like on her own. And I feel like I'm a lot the same way like that, but I still identify more with that. Like I'll do it for 60. Right. Mindset. I do too. I'm and not, I don't know, you know why. It's, I, I, I do people, too. I'm guilty. I, I well, I'm not as much as I used to be, but I tell people all the time, do not be embarrassed to tell me how much something costs. Do not. Because like I said, whatever, whatever you feel that, that this worth, mm-hmm. tell me it, let me, let me make that decision. Mm-hmm. Don't, you know what I mean? Don't start undercutting yeah. yourself before you've even got to that table with the sales contract. Right. Cause that drives me crazy. Um, do you think Lauren, do you see, um, do you see how like, um, oh, we have a visitor. Um, oh, <laughs> just here, do it right there. <laughs> um, do you see um, like a change in, okay, so uh, capital capital ventures are, like you said, it's the, when the business is starting, right, and they um, need capital, mm-hmm. and then you go to, what are they called, the capital investments? For, um, uh, I'm making serious. Yep. Okay. Um, Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, so, anyway, <laughs> where were we? <laughs> Capital. Yes. So, they go to companies, right? And they, they pitch their ideas, kind of, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And then they kind of are asking for that starting capital, right? Now, a lot of those times, it's a woman, and they don't understand what her business is because they're all a bunch of old men. Do you see that happen a lot or do you think that maybe those old guys are going to start to age out and we're going to have a net fresh younger group of people in there that aren't there, are aren't there also organizations that specialize like it, it focus on women like helping to so again when we open businesses we were trained we save money we take like whatever savings we have and we start it right yeah and then we're told we go to the bank we get a loan and we start off in debt immediately right exactly, we haven't yeah. even made a dollar and we're already in debt Nobody ever taught us how to put together proper profiles so that you can walk in and obtain capital from day one properly structured where you know it's going to bring a return for you, Mm -hmm. where you know you're getting the best rates, where you're creating a relationship with your banker, where your banker is going to want to do business with you over and over and over because you're making money together. But I bet this is kind of what you do. You advise people. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, It's tough to see, particularly women business owners, go in, they're so excited about their new business. They go in, they ask for a loan, and they don't get it. More times than not, it's because they're using their, their social security number. I've heard backpack. that. Yes. Oh, fatal mistake, fatal mistake. And I love teaching people about the difference in how to use those social security numbers and EINs to our advantage because I didn't even learn it in business school. Mm-hmm. I learned all of this stuff through my own mentor. Right. Um, prior to that, I've I have masters, you know, I didn't gain access to this level of knowledge until I engaged with a mentor who had already been there, done that. Right. Been the place. Was your I mentor want. a man or a woman? Man. Really? Yes. But um, they still taught you a lot of it, obviously. He taught me everything um, in capital, in finance, in communication, in negotiation, in structuring businesses, in building out businesses, and exiting all of Right. Credit. That, that sounds amazing. I am very interested in this, especially the whole thing about your social security number, because I think that, like you said, when, once you give somebody your social security number, you've given up your basically any sort of protection you have yeah, so on why your personal it, assets, right? Yeah. They, if anything goes awry, you stop paying, the bank wants to foreclose or um, bankruptcy, it comes back on you. So you could lose your house. You could lose your oh car. Oh, my gosh. Um, any retirement accounts that you didn't have secured properly. So those become things that can be vulnerable in those situations. Mm-hmm. As opposed to running things properly through your business, mm-hmm. everything is backed by your business. Mm-hmm. So if, God forbid, something happens and you can't pay those bills anymore, they just take the items back from the business and you stay safe. 
Mm -hmm. That's phenomenal information to know. (laughs) And you said that people could get their loans denied because they're using their social security number? If they don't have the the right credit profile. Mm, Got it. You know, there's so much that goes into credit and finance and capital that it's uh, like a zipper, I guess, is the best way to put it. You put in one piece, next piece, next piece. And that's how you get together. Okay. I definitely want to talk more about this because I think this is incredibly important information for business owners. So stay tuned. We'll be back with more Bad Radio. Sounds like a good time. Why don't you stay tuned, huh? 11 to 1 every Sunday afternoon right here on News Radio WFLA Orlando. Welcome back to Bad Radio, brought to you by Premier Couple Superstore because a couple that plays together stays together. Welcome back. And this portion of Bad Radio is brought to you by Forge IT Consulting, providing a fully outsourced IT department with a personal touch for small business. No company is too small with ForgeITConsulting.com. John uh, presented today in BNI. Oh, nice. uh, Yeah, he's such a great guy. If you ever need like a computer person, I got a guy. Anything IT, security. Yeah, he's phenomenal. I mean, he's done everything from like fix my, all my printers, like made all my printer or not all my printers but all my computers be able to print to my printer yeah. and worked on my kids computer and networking stuff and he set up like my bad radio.com he's mm-hmm. done everything so we're here with lauren dual garu hey like it you like it like got it, it. Got it. <laughs> um, so the, during the last um, segment she was talking about some stuff that really kind of blows me away because mm-hmm. i remember you telling me about this stuff before and it was before I was actually a business owner. And I have to tell you that I didn't understand. Yeah. But now that I am a business owner, mm-hmm. because a business at a distance is LLC, mm-hmm. I understand what an EIN number is. And I understand what all this stuff is. But before, I'm like, I, what's wrong with giving your social, you know what I mean, mm-hmm. social security number? But that being said, so you said that that's a common thing that happens that causes people, I mean, if their credit isn't good and they give and they're, they want a loan for to start a business, they might get denied because your credit isn't what it needs to be. Right. Well, remember, anytime you're using your social security number to apply for any type of credit, um, pretty much anything, it's going to get run and they're going to go through and they're going to get the report on your profile and they're going to look through it. Yeah. And notice why I call it a profile and not a credit report because they can be rebuilt. There's six main sections that get rebuilt to get great credit, rock star credit as We've talked about that channels. before. Yeah. Yes. So there's six main areas that we go into, we rebuild, and that's what creates that three-digit score. But it's not the three-digit score that makes you fundable. It's the quality of the profile and how cleaned up it is, how robust it is, different mixes. It's not always about that three-digit credit score. So walking into a bank, even though you have a 750, for example, mm-hmm. and not walking out with whatever capital you were intending to get, could very well be just your profile wasn't cleaned up. It, it's not always about the three-digit number. So, what do you mean about? Oh, sorry. Oh no, no. Go ahead. What do you mean by cleaned up? What is it? Well, okay. So for example, I'm like I've gone from, you know, like a, a 720 down to a 650 mm-hmm. up to a 700 down. You know what I mean? Like I've yo-yoed throughout they my change ad- all the time. Yeah. Yeah, but mm-hmm. throughout my adult life, mm-hmm. <laughs> depending on. If I'm buying a car, right. if I'm doing this, if I'm doing that, you know what I mean? I've never been able to get it like at 750 and just let it stay there because I, won't. I mean, but is that what you mean by cleaned up? They see these values. No. So, and- um, for example, credit repair, right? Mm-hmm. We all have an idea of what credit repair is and they go through and they file all these disputes mm-hmm. to take off late payments, collection accounts. That's cleaned up. Mm-hmm. That's the idea of cleaning up, is removing okay. the, the negative items. Okay. Oh, okay. And then we replenish it with positive items, things that are going to make you look like a rock star so that every lender wants to give you all the money. Do you have to bring an attorney or anything in for those disputes? When you have- no, not typically. Okay. I mean, all situations are different. Uh, people are usually always at different levels. Mm-hmm. I have had some circumstances where we have called in an attorney, mm-hmm. um, but typically, no, not. Okay. Cool. So you'll, I mean, so this is another thing that mm-hmm. you do under the house is that you, you work with people on establishing not just a good credit number, but a credit, you said a profile. That was actually one of my, my first businesses after my divorce was helping people restore and replenish their personal credit profiles. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I started breaking into business credit profiles and helping people marry those two and separate themselves so they don't have the liability. That's phenomenal. Can you, 
how do you how do you start business credit when you are starting a business? <laughs> There's a lot of pieces that go into it. Right? Yeah. There's about 47 pieces. But when you're building business credit, you don't necessarily just go marching right in to a bank and create a bank account. There's a bunch of other factors and variables that you really want to make sure that you have in place. God, she's so making that, me so nervous. So that you're, you're coming with your Why? best foot forward. Because we're like, we're doing it wrong. <laughs> I know. I'm Let like, me ask you I this. definitely just signed up for a bank. I'm like, oh, crap. What, what I don't know. She just said everything that I did. <laughs> yeah. Let me ask you this. Your business address mm-hmm. where does it go to my oh, home my house yeah that's bad <laughs> oh, no <laughs> sorry ladies okay. where are you supposed to make it go if it's a p.o box i'm guessing i think no. it's not supposed to you be you wouldn't use a p.o box yeah it won't let you do a p.o box a lot of places creditors banks lenders won't deliver to a p.o box okay oh. um so you can get a virtual address there's spaces that you can rent as for as low as ten dollars a month Virtual you can get space. your business now. You yeah. mean like renting a mailbox at an established business? At a business, yes, but not a um, office max where they have some business right, right, right. like mail okay. services. Uh-huh. Um, not a PO box at a post office, mm-hmm. but this is an actual corporate street address. Right. So when lenders go online and they Google your business, they see this beautiful corporate office. Interesting. Instead of your house. Huh. Because what, what, what would that tell? <laughs> what would that tell a lender if they're they're searching you to see if they want to oh, yeah. underwrite you and you they get your house? Yeah. But then the guy next to you searches it and sees this big Fortune 500 business. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Who does he want to lend to? Yeah. No, you're making complete and total ridiculous sense to me right now. <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> sense. Sorry. That is this episode. Uh, <laughs> that is always the piece of news that people are like, no. Mm-hmm. No. What else like, wrong did I do? Yeah. <laughs> can I go back and change it, though? Uh, yeah, it can be changed. It takes a little while. Right. We have to go through the different entities, but yeah, we can change it. Okay. We can update it. Yeah. What about uh, doing business as thing? How important is that to go through changes to do that again it depends on what you're trying to accomplish okay i'm just trying to get Um, my own business knowledge over here yeah destination (laughs) always determines direction like your business is not going to be the same as her business right because they're just different industries altogether so capital requirements are going to be different Mm -hmm. underwriting requirements might look a little bit different Mm -hmm. you know where you might have your business address might look a little bit different so there's not one solid answer recipe. for all got you right. everyone gets their own little dash of pepper salt maybe some coriander okay mm-hmm. you don't get chili sauce you get red chili flakes mm-hmm. what you cooking over there <laughs> no, I, just I don't know I, maybe i'm getting hungry <laughs> <laughs> um so so okay I, my business is a radio show uh, mm-hmm. but i mean do you still think that that would need like a, a an address that's not my home since are you going to be building and growing your business Yes. Then absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Right. I mean, because it is. Like mm-hmm. you said, this is, I mean, the radio show has sponsors. So. Yeah. If it's not a hobby and this is your business mm-hmm. and you want to be able to access capital so you can grow it, more stations, more marketing, mm-hmm. then absolutely. Mm-hmm. Those would things that you would want to restructure and put together so that you can start your business credit profiles. Right, because I the way that I could grow it, this show is through sponsorships, mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. the more sponsors that come on, the more money capital that I have, and then yep. I can, like I said, then I can have the capital to expand into other markets because yep. I have to cover the cost and then and all that other stuff. But I mean, you're saying that I could potentially go into like a lender, and if I have all my ducks in a row, and say this is what I want to do with my radio show. I want to be in every market in the state of Florida. Um, I plan on making X amount per market, but I need this much to get started to to get to those things. And then mm-hmm. I'll get the sponsors. That would how that would work. I mean, that's a highly simplified version, but yes, yeah. that's that's about closer to where it would be. But I also want to ask both of you the question, you know, so often business owners particularly feel like I don't need capital. I'm a real estate agent, right? I don't need capital. But let me ask you this. What if you had capital to go ahead and buy income producing assets, again, through your business, that brought you more revenue, that increased your valuation right away? Like what? I mean, give give me an example. Real estate. Properties. Businesses. Okay. You know how I like to buy businesses in real estate. (laughs) Yes, I do. (laughs) And I learned very quickly that when you add value that way, you grow 
exponentially faster as opposed to more sales, more sponsors, more markets. So business at a distance would buy, I don't know, a piece of property? A piece of property. It would buy a, an auxiliary company business that uh-huh. kind of is in alignment with it. Ooh. And then you would automatically grow your balance sheet just at acquisition by buying that item. But, I, know, but I would have to borrow the money to buy that and then mm-hmm. go from there. That's the business credit portion of it. Ha. But this is fascinating. Yeah. Is it like you say, if <laughs> yeah. you don't think you need money for inventory or whatever, I want you to think outside of the box. There's other ways to bring in revenue to your companies. Ooh. Hmm. Yeah, so we're going to talk more about that. And actually, when we get back, I want to talk about one of the companies that you just acquired, and it's called Q-Grips. So we're going to talk about that when we get back. So stay tuned. You're listening to Bad Radio on News Radio WFLA, Orlando. Welcome back to Bad Radio, brought to you by Premier Couple Superstore, because a couple that plays together stays together. This portion of Bad Radio is brought to you by Ground Up Property Services. Rainy season is here, so don't make the mistake of overwatering your lawn. Call Rick Hall with Ground Up Property Services about a water sensor. Too much water can be just as harmful as not enough. And while you're at it, ask about the irrigation system inspection. And don't forget the lawn painting service. If you're planning an outdoor event and you want to hide those brown spots, call Ground Up Property Services at 407-468-4295. You can also find them at groundupinc.com. Dot net. And we are back with Lauren with the House of Solo Andrea. And um, before break, I mentioned that um, she just recently acquired a business and it's called Q Grips. And I, what I would like to do is just talk about that whole process. I meant because I, the last time I talked to you, you're like, girl, I never thought in a million years I would do this much research on earwax. <laughs> I never, that was never my study point, actually. Think, think of that. Um, uh, but how did this whole come to be? Well, first of all, tell us what Q-Grips is. Okay, so Q-Grips is a tool to clean your ear without pushing the earwax farther in. Mm-hmm. We've all heard the stories mm-hmm. about Q-tips pushes the dirt, the debris in mm-hmm. farther against right. the eardrum. And then you get impaction, you get infections, yeah. um, and sometimes you can lose your hearing. You know, particularly uh, old, older people, because they have the hearing aids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They experience a lot of impaction, um, and it can also be affected on the shape of your ears. But, okay. So, Q-Grips is a very soft silicone spiral <laughs> that actually cleans out the earwax. I got it here with me. Here we go. <laughs> but you can see how flexible it is. Mm-hmm. Oh, like, nice. It goes in any size ear, mm-hmm. babies, adults, um, people with autism, because they have different shaped ears. Well, also, I noticed that people that are Down autistic. Down syndrome. I'm sorry. Down syndrome. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Because I was going to say that people with uh, autistic lots of times wear headphones mm-hmm. a mm-hmm. lot yeah. because of their ears. And I thought that maybe that might cause them to have more ear issues. So Down it syndrome. Could. Yeah. It could. Um, but definitely Down syndrome because of the shape of the ear. Mm-hmm. So it goes in. It shows the direction that you have to curl oh, nice. it and it cleans it all out and it brings it out my my nine-year-old was just complaining to my 15 year old to not use q-tips last night she was doing that one of those things to her that's, yeah. oh, that's awesome she's, <laughs> and she's like you know you're not supposed to do that she's like what else am i supposed to do so now i have an answer <laughs> but it's, it's a phenomenal product and you said it has one competitor right we have one competitor over in the uk right okay. now Okay, but, um, but you're just saying that it wasn't as soft, it's not as flexible. It's, there's so many things that are different about them. It's not as soft. The tip here on the end is wider. Mm-hmm. So it might not go into all ear types or it might cause irritation to smaller ears. Right. But it doesn't have the flexibility. The The spiral is more apart, far apart, so it doesn't pull out quite so much. Right. It's not buy one, get one free. It's <laughs> not free shipping. <laughs> so that's, um. so how did you come about, like, this this opportunity? I am always looking for businesses to buy, um, particularly with the economy now. Mm-hmm. I was looking at virtual businesses, online businesses, and happened to come across this one. And the seller was a younger gentleman who had taught himself to create online stores. And he had created this a couple of years ago, and it had totally exploded. So he went and he was creating another one in a different niche. He had lost focus in Q-Grips, and it went down. So he Which decided, happens, you know. It does. It does. <laughs> when you don't have a team behind you and, you know, people assisting you, it, it happens. So he had put it up, and I saw it. I was like, hmm, that's an interesting concept. I never thought about earwax cleaners. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but we had a 
great deal come out of it. Uh, capital, that was awesome. Uh, we negotiated a perfect structure. He's still got his other business. Mm-hmm. Um, Q Grips has joined the Salandria family. So we're very excited. Right. And so the next steps for Q Grips, though, is like, I mean, you started advertising. I know you said you were yep. going to start doing the social media stuff, right? Yep. Uh, it's that step one. It right? is. It's advertised. It's on Google, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and um, all of them. TikTok. <laughs> yes. TikTok. Yes. All the things. <laughs> all the things that are out there. <laughs> My marketing person, he's fantastic. He really goes out of his way to make sure that we have the reach and that um, things are also connected, backlinked, making sure the keywords are on top and mm-hmm. working well. But we're also going out um, this Sunday, actually. We're going to be going to the like Eola Farmer's Market. Okay, so you're going to start doing some because, event marketing. You know, Love people it. might see this online and be like, um, no. Yeah. So we're going to come out to the market this Saturday, or Sunday, excuse me, and we're going to be showing and letting people try them out. Mm-hmm. This is so you can really feel how it is. Because even if you don't have an earwax, you don't feel like you have an earwax problem, you don't mm-hmm. really accumulate it, mm-hmm. the brain massage. <laughs> okay, yeah. the brain massage. <laughs> I think I put that in the post yesterday or something. Um, and I always laugh when I think about it, but yes. Mm-hmm. I mean, I used to clean my ears just to scratch my brain. Yeah. No, yeah. no, yeah. just me. No, and that's not just you. You know what's weird it's, is my dad, when he cleans his ears, it makes him cough. Is that huh. so bizarre? Yep, so bizarre. I have heard so of bizarre. that before, actually. I know someone who sneezes yep, when I've, they clean their ears. Yep, yeah, I've heard that too. I'm like, I guess it's all connected back in there somewhere, but... But yeah, my dad, he, he'll clean his ears and it'll make him cough. I'm like, that's just bizarre, dad. <laughs> I bet my parents would like that. They work really well. Um, but the, So the I think, like, like I said, event marketing, awesome idea. Like, because that's like super grassroots, get in front of people. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's a perfect target demo. The, what is it the one at Lake Eola? Yeah. Yeah, very yeah. cool. Well, you know where to find me when you're ready to like, to bust it out that stuff because I'm all about the direct mm-hmm. response. Um, and um, so now that, like I said, and so now you, it's under the house of Solandria. Mm-hmm. Um, what happens next? I mean, do you just like, are you going to go out and start looking for new businesses? Are you, do you work with this one until it's starting making a profit? And then you're like, okay, I'm going to sell it or I'm going to hold on to that one because it's making me money. And then I'm going to move on to the next. I mean, how do you, how does Lauren work with this sort of thing? Oh, well, with Q-Grips, we're probably, we're going to be going to install an executive team, Mm -hmm. an executive board to really take it to the next level. Um, It started marketing, so we're getting more sales coming in. Mm -hmm. Um, It's already turning around. Okay. So, yes, we will be looking, we already are looking for additional businesses to acquire. (laughs) Remember how I said auxiliary to something like this? So things that can be in alignment with ear cleaning. That way it's kind of staying all in Mm. the same family, Mm -hmm. you see? So, no, we are always looking for other businesses. Even when we were going through the acquisition for Q-Grips, we were still actively seeking, talking to business owners Mm -hmm. to buy more businesses. It's not just me. So when you have a team, you can really take on five companies, Mm -hmm. you know, all of the brands of Salandria, Mm -hmm. and add on new companies and help other business owners and be service to the community. At some point, though, do you like, okay, I'm going to sell this? I might. Um, probably not. I might keep it for... Well, not just um, this one, but some of the businesses. Have you mm-hmm. had some that come under the house and then you are like, okay, that's... I haven't, no. Oh. I don't really sell much of mine. I help other people sell theirs. Oh, mm-hmm. gotcha. Um, I would just like to keep growing ours. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so no, no, lot, that's good. Do a lot of research and find the ones you like and then you keep them. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. My boy Dominic will love them one day. Yeah. So. <laughs> Um, well, all of this stuff is just, like I said, really eye-opening when it comes to how to grow a business. And it's not just a business, but a set of businesses. Mm-hmm. And um, how, many, how many businesses do you own? Five, six, six. You are a born entrepreneur. Don't call her that. Oh, so, don't. That's the other thing. I have to. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. Okay, hold on. It's an industrialist. We're going full teacher mode on this. Okay. okay. So entrepreneur. I said uh-huh. that. We have things. about a minute 30. So okay. buckle up. So yeah. entrepreneur is a person who organizes and operates a business and taking on greater than normal financial risks. Okay. An industrialist is one who controls industry. 
Nowhere in that definition did you hear about a financial risk. Okay. <laughs> I know. I called her an entrepreneur when we did our one to one. I got my hands slapped. <laughs> She's like, you know an industrialist. I'm like, I do. She goes, Yeah, Roosevelt. I'm like, Roosevelt. Roosevelt. Rockefeller. Rockefeller. I'm like, when am Trump. I know? how do I know Rockefeller? <laughs> but I, I was like, okay, maybe like one, you know, when I think of Rockefeller, I think of like I don't know, railroads. But anyway, um, Lauren, you have been a great guest. Thank you this for being so here This has been so much fun, guys. So give everybody your contact information because I think that there's a lot of people that could really benefit from talking to you. Okay, so for Q Grips, it's official sl- slash Q slash grips dot com. Mm-hmm. You can find it all over Facebook, too. Like I said, there's advertisements. But then to contact me about your business, please go to principled women in biz like b-i-z dot com principled women in biz dot com perfect mm-hmm. and what i'll do is when we post the video i will include all of that information as well all right so we're going to go to break and when we get back we're going to jump into our number two of bad radios so stay tuned don't forget about melissa jacob we love her Aww. what's the name of your website oh striking brand i thought we were wrapping i was like let's scoot on no. out no. <laughs> power number one you never know stay tuned for the second hour be right back you're listening to radio cosmos all night long bravo my couple was little lady come on shop come on shop break for 30 seconds come on shop you are now listening to Bad Radio. And welcome back as we launch into the second hour of Bad Radio. I'm going to run through all of the regular info for those of you who might have just joined us. I am Angel Smarito, your host, and we've got our producer, Melissa Fox. What up, what up? Our co-host and videographer, Melissa Jacob. That's me. Hello. And her business is called Striking Brand. And if you watched, you can see all of last year's Bad Radio um, episodes on badradio.com. And she did all of those. Mm-hmm. She did an amazing job. Thank you. And you can go to strikingbrand.com and you can see all of her other work because she is a photographer as well as a videographer. Okay. Our second guest today is a longtime friend, um, Craig LaFleur with Pirate Spot Fireworks. Hello. Hello. Hi. Craig was on the show uh, last year, but I think it was, we didn't have the video uh, the video last year, did we? No, I don't believe we did. Yeah. You must have snuck in right towards the end before uh, I got in there. Yes. Um, but yep. I told him it was a super fun show because I think I, my blonde was coming out. I just, I couldn't, <laughs> nice. I, what was it? I couldn't remember the name of some lake or something. And mm-hmm. Emily kept saying, it's Lake Monroe. And I was like, what's the name? And I, and, she, and she's just like, it's like Monroe. And I'm just, I forgot all about that. And I was just like, la, 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 la. It just was not registering with me. <laughs> so anyway, but anyway, so Craig and I are actually friends. So okay. like we can like banter um, for hours. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. it. <laughs> so I met Craig years and years ago when I actually worked here at iHeart and I don't really even un- remember how we became acquainted, but somehow I got you as a client and, and that's when, I mean, this would have been 14 years ago. So how many years have you been doing Pirate Spot now? So 2007. So, and started advertising 2008 okay. with iHeart. So. Well, who was your rep before me? Do you remember? Oh, I, I can't remember. Please, I'm an old man now. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I'm just, I'm trying to remember, but I, I've been your rep for as long as I remember. And then when I left here and I went over to the other place, mm-hmm. you know, I, of course I, you know, I was like, hey, I got stations yeah. over here too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, come here. <laughs> anyway, but Craig's been great because he like he support he's the first one he gave Anna her first job. He's given Aiden his first oh, job. Nice. Um I think it's funny now because Aiden's like, they make me pick everything up all the time. I'm like, well, that's what happens when you're six foot yeah, tall. No kidding, yeah, no kidding. You're tall and you're in great shape <laughs> and uh, you're young and we're not. So. I know. He's not complaining at all. In fact, I think he he really likes the fact that he's had this growth spurt and he's like this hum- humongous yeah. young person now. Yeah, every time he shows up because we're seasonal, so we're only right. open for New Year's Eve and for Fourth of July. Every time he shows up, there's like another three inches on the kid. <laughs> yeah. Like, wow. Yesterday, um, yeah. he pitched um, in West Palm, and um, he he it was he pitched the whole seven innings, nine strikeouts, uh, hit eighty seven miles per hour. Wow. Um, wow. It was just a phenomenal game. Two I hope hits. scouts were there. Huh? Were scouts? They there? did a write up on him oh, on like nice. the scouts notes Ooh. and stuff like that. So that's it's good. coming. It's coming. It's going to be good. But anyway, so. This is your 14th year of doing Pirate Spot? Or no, no. So there? this is going to be 16 for us. Nice. So, and how many locations do you have seven, now? I can't. Three locations. Right. So it's it's 
above 15, below 20. We'll yeah, say yeah, that. So. <laughs> in that ballpark. Where, so where are you? You said three locations? Yeah, we're in uh, Longwood, right on the corner of 434 and 1792. Okay. We're in Sanford in the Seminole Town Center parking lot. So in the mall parking lot right okay, there, right, right near the Hooters. Nice. And uh, in Eustis off of 441. Okay. Now, was Eustis or Longwood your first one? Longwood was the first one. And actually, at the time, I lived... Uh, in Longwood, so I was looking around for a place to open one, and uh, it was close to home. I liked the corner where we're at, and mm-hmm. uh, made the jump from there. Right, and so people just know you're going to be there, and then they're they're like, okay, we're going to go to Craig because he has the best fireworks in town. How do you get the best fireworks in town? Yeah. <laughs> so every year, I probably watch. 300 fireworks on video, and then we actually go to demos every year. All of the big importers who sell wholesale domestically or who import hold demos across the U.S. So we go to a couple of the biggest ones every year, which I'll be honest, what it is now is it's a guy's trip where we <laughs> eat, drink, and watch fireworks I like this. That on the company suck. dime. No, no, I, come on. It's, like people are but volunteering you the company, to go so that's down. your dime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Who? <laughs> it's fun. No, like when we go... Those companies are because I buy enough fireworks now oh, to where right. the, the rooms are comped and they, nice. you know, they're, they're bringing in barbecue for us and taking us out oh. to dinner. And I oh, yeah. so go. <laughs> you basically spend a long weekend, uh, depending on where we're at, sitting in like a, a high school football stadium stands. And they're launching fireworks. I was wondering from the field. how they so did that. If they went out to like a big open field and people just got like lawn chairs and you know like mm-hmm. campers and it, that it, sort of it thing. Depends where you're at. One of the ones in Pittsburgh, Kansas, actually one of my favorite ones. They just uh, they've got a 350 thousand square foot warehouse out there, but they own acres of land in front of the warehouse. So they just do it right in front of their warehouse, and they actually bring in temporary bleachers and tables and chairs, and we sit there with a rating sheet. And uh, watch fireworks and rate them. I, I usually, it's great actually to, to bring a crew of people because I've mm-hmm. done it for so long. You get used to seeing certain things and, and I don't want to say you get jaded, but maybe I'm used to a particular thing and it doesn't impress me mm-hmm. as much yeah, right. as it might other people. So what we do is we have, you know, three to five people there. We all rate the fireworks and at the end we average the score. So it's every year, no, no fail. I'll look at the rating sheets and there'll be people who are like, oh, this is amazing. And I'll be like, I gave it a seven out of 10. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, but I, you know, I trust their judgment as well. So that's how we pick the best fireworks. I, I don't care that much about what the cost is for me. I, I mean, I, I'm fortunate in that uh, I can undercut most of my competitors. I can carry better stuff and sell it for less than they was, sell the medi- mediocre stuff. I was going to ask you, why are fireworks so expensive? Because they're all made in China okay, and imported from China. Mm-hmm. I mean, that, that's the long and short of it. During the pandemic, the shipping rates skyrocketed. Mm-hmm. So I remember you're talking about it. that. The cost of a container went from about $12,000 in shipping costs to about thirty seven. Oh, Oh, wow. Yeah, it was a stinger. Yeah. And uh, I mean, so when, when you buy them, do they, I mean, do you buy them from a warehouse that they're already here or do you actually have to pay for them to be shipped over from over, well, you know, the majority uh, we see at these demos, uh, we see both domestic and import. And then uh, I order my import well, about a year ahead. So right. uh, we order the stuff a year before it actually starts. Around. We order this year in uh, end of July, begin, beginning of August, and they started arriving in March of mm-hmm. this year. So, man, that's a lot of work. I didn't, right. you know, you don't realize that. So, uh, Tom and I were driving down. I don't know. We're we were in like the Bithlow area. We're going towards West Paul. You know, we're going to go to ninety five. And there was just like a one off little guy over there. And I'm like, Tom's like, I wonder where he gets his fireworks. I'm like, I'm going to ask Craig. But I meant like, they're just like, they're just like, what do you like drive to Tennessee or something and buy so them and bring them back? And I mean, there's whole tons of wholesale places in uh, the big ones are in North Carolina. Uh, there's some in Louisiana, and then up north, there's uh, Kansas has some. Mm-hmm. So if you're ordering a lot, you can order it wholesale. Now, the the difference in cost between buying domestically wholesale and importing is probably 25 to 30 percent. Mm-hmm. And to be honest, I think for the for the most part, I get better stuff by importing. Right. Uh, you you have to be very picky about that. I'm very picky about what companies I I use. There's 
20 different uh, wholesalers in the United States, and I use about four. Mm -hmm. And then the Uh, rest of it you do direct import? I direct import. Yeah, I'm probably importing about 80% of my stuff right now and about 20% domestically. Because in all honesty, if there's something that's amazing and it's only available domestically, I'm going to carry it. Right. Like I, I'm <laughs> going to have it, out. <laughs> period. It doesn't matter if I can't import it. If I'm paying more for it, but it's amazing, I'm going to have it in the tent. So, I know we're coming up to the break, but I'm just wondering, is there like always like each year, is there like one big thing that everybody's got to have? So just about every year there's one thing. And it's funny because we videotape the demos too. Mm-hmm. And then we'll go back and watch the, uh, the video. And the audio on the video is almost more valuable than the video itself because there are certain fireworks where you will hear a thousand people who are there. Oh, <laughs> right? and they're like, well, we got to get that one. <laughs> like if, 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 if people react like that, you know, mm-hmm. but there's almost always something, whether it's a new effect or a new color that they've come up with, or, you know, uh, this, this year we have one, actually we, we had it last year as well. It's a smaller cake, but uh, it's amazing show for the size that it is. Right. Well, we're going to talk more about fireworks when we get back from break. So stay tuned because it's going to be a good one. Yeah, it should be. We're not going to blow up the place, though. Not here. (laughs) But it'd be fun. I mean, I thought about it, but let's not do that. You're listening to Bad Radio Sundays from 11 until 1 on News Radio WFLA Orlando. Welcome back to Bad Radio, brought to you by Premier Couple Superstore, because a couple that plays together stays together. Welcome back. And this portion of the show is brought to you by Rachel Roach Realty, a Coldwell Banker Realtor. With a sea of realtors out there, choose one that thinks about you first and not their commission. 407-252-4566. And we are here with Craig LaFleur, owner of Pirate Spot Fireworks. And you said we have three different locations. And before break, we were talking about the different kinds of mm-hmm. fireworks and um, and everything that goes into like picking out <laughs> <laughs> the best fireworks. But um, what even made you decide to do this in the first place? Okay, I, I am going to directly blame my father. Okay. Um, <laughs> I am a pyromaniac, and it's his fault. So <laughs> when I was growing up, I'm, I'm from Louisiana originally, and uh, one of the best memories I have is as a young kid going with my dad to Angelo's Fireworks. I still know the name of it, mm-hmm. and actually it's still there in Louisiana run by his daughter now nice. he's long past but the, so we would go and my dad would let me pick out different things and mr angelo would say oh you want to try this and he'd give a couple of things and my dad would get some stuff and then he and i would set fireworks off together for fourth of july and for new year's every year oh. and it was just such a great time and both really enjoyed it uh so i had only always done fireworks i moved to florida later and I couldn't believe that uh, I couldn't get most of the stuff that I was buying in Louisiana here. Uh, I was not impressed with what was available here. You're so, like, I'm going to change it. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> Every time I, on would, a mission. <laughs> I, I would drive home to Louisiana to visit and I would stop at stores on the way and pick up stuff. But or I go remember to, that as a kid. We would take trips to North Carolina and my dad would be like, okay, we got to take a trip. We got to. Well, he, he, I thought it was Tennessee, but I could be wrong. I don't remember. But I meant we actually had to drive to a state yeah. to load up and then. And then that's what we would have for our fireworks. Most firework vendors, their goal is to buy the cheapest product Mm -hmm. they can, uh, mark it up by an obscene amount, and then sell it. Because you have no choice. I mean, whenever I started in the business, that was it. I mean, the the largest players were uh, carrying junk, in my opinion. Right. Uh, So I became more educated, started researching fireworks, finding out what was good, what was not, found out how to order myself. And whenever I first started... Literally, it was me and six guys who were all pyromaniacs. We ordered wholesale for ourselves. And then it, we had a couple of extra things. We just sold off to friends, uh-huh. you know, near cost. And uh, that was for New Year's one year. And then in March, April, the next year, I started getting phone calls. Going, wow. Hey, uh, my name's Chris. I'm a friend of Mark's. And <laughs> he got these fireworks from you. And they were really cool. <laughs> so I, I brought even more the next year and did the same thing, sold off the extra and they were gone in a week. That's right. so and, cool. And uh, I spent a year researching it actually kind of from an industrial engineering perspective, looking at how the stores did it and the other tents. And I said, I think I can do it better. So oh, I, sp- I spent a year working on it and then opened up my own place and then uh, made everyone who knew me crazy because I changed just about everything every year for the first five years <laughs> <laughs> until I really felt we were in yeah. the zone. 
So his business well, came to him. That's awesome. But cool he story. is the guy from Louisiana. Yeah. Like when I walk through, he's like, oh, you got to have one of these and yeah. one of these and one of these. And next thing you know, Aiden will come home too with like all these fireworks. And he's just like, he's glowing. He's like so excited for them. Oh, well, I'm going to need to come to you then. One of our big differences is in our locations, we have touch screens with video of everything we sell. So you can actually see it before you buy it. You mm-hmm. can see beca- because... Uh, n- not everyone likes everything. Some people like big gold brocade and they don't want really loud fireworks. And mm-hmm. some people like, you know, something that's crazy wide and some people can only, they don't have a lot of room and they need something that just fires vertically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we have it all and you can uh, make sure that you're picking out stuff that is appropriate for you instead of just buying whatever box happens to be on the shelf in front of you. I know one time we got one from Craig and he was like, it's medium, right? It lit up our whole freaking neighborhood. <laughs> Like, like it was like canopy of trees and the kids were running. My my perspective, once (laughs) again, becomes a little (laughs) off kilter. It has a different scale. Well, those videos sound really helpful because usually when I go into a store, I'm like asking the person, what does this one look like? Mm-hmm. What does this one look like? And it's like the descriptions are so yeah, so hard. So the video is probably real helpful. But they're still like just the must haves, right? Oh, yeah. So I mean, what are some of those? Oh, God. so everyone lo- like we've had this thing called poopy puppy, which is a little novelty that you set on the ground for kids and you light it and it looks like it's taking a dump. <laughs> and it kids is. Love it. It. Oh, my God. We go through so many of those every year. It's ridiculous. And then. I mean, people like the small, we call them the 200 gram cakes, which are the smaller aerial cakes that shoot up and things like that. And you have like mortar. What's a mortar? Oh, yeah. The the mortars are the one that you put in a tube one at a time and you light it and then they shoot up in the air with a big break. And, Mm -hmm. you know, you have all sizes from like small mortars up to the largest like Excalibur Platinum. It goes about 250 foot in the air with about 175 foot diameter break. So that's... uh, it sounds like a cannon going off. Do so people have to have a license to buy some of those? You do not. So these are all consumer fireworks. So they're all legal in the state of Florida. Do you make people so. sign a waiver before they go? No, no waivers <laughs> or anything else like that. We uh, we do. Like if you go to our website, IWantFireworks.com, we have an entire page on safety that I highly recommend you uh, peruse mm-hmm. and yeah. take a look over because it's very important for us. Well, it's always, like you said, you know, I remember my dad, again, we talk about my dad, but I think he singed like all the hair off his legs one year and then another, and then by by the time they're done, his fingertips are like all black. Oh gosh. (laughs) My, my dad loves to tell the story of whenever I was a little kid, he was holding a Roman candle and I told him, dad, you're not supposed to hold those Roman candles. You have to put them in the ground. And he laughed at me and then it blew up in his hand Mm. and it was a tiny Roman candle, no damage to him except scaring the poop out of him yeah mm-hmm. but uh of course he loves telling people that story because my actually my my parents come down for fourth I of july know. almost every year <laughs> and they help me at the fireworks tent yeah so my dad is there at the tent right now helping people who come in and it, it's hilarious because i straight up get phone calls i had a call on tuesday of this week going I'm coming on Thursday. Is your father going to be there? Because that that's who they want to help him. Like, oh, they don't want oh, to talk to me. he's amazing. I love him. Oh, yeah. And what they do for their staff, it's like a tradition. He, he'll, like, cook, like, like Louisiana-style, like, jambalaya uh-huh. and, and chicken. And, you know, when the kids would come home, because like I said, Anna worked there first, mm-hmm. and then Aiden, too. They would, he'd be like, oh, you know. Craig's dad made the best stuff today. <laughs> we, we will be having crawfish etouffee for dinner tomorrow wow. night. So, yeah, I'm excited. Uh, so. it's, does Aiden work tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. July 1st. I know he's there. Um, but that's, you know what I mean? It's like, so the kids come in and they work and it's like this whole family environment. Mm-hmm. Um, but I like, even for Anna, I was amazed at how well um, it was organized and put together. Cause it was the first time she'd ever been in a job environment ever. Mm-hmm. And I dropped her off and I was like, Oh, Craig, take care of her. You know, I'm all <laughs> nervous. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, call me if you need anything. I go to pick her up and she's like behind the register, like next, come on. Yeah. Next, <laughs> come on. Next. And I was like, um, all right. I don't know what you did, but yep. it worked. And she's a worker now. It, it is hilarious how these teenagers mm-hmm. just jump on this it, it's you know 90 percent of the the kids who come and work for us work year after year Season, after year yeah. until they graduate and go to college and uh you know i the the person running my tent in sanford started working for me when he was 15 worked for me every year is it jason J- uh jacob okay Table. yeah 
went to uh, went to college, graduated, went to law school, graduated. He's got a law practice now, and he's running my tent in San. <laughs> That's so fantastic. And, and he goes to the firework demos with us to watch fireworks <laughs> oh, because fun. he's a pyromaniac too. So he's like, I, "This is the greatest thing ever." Are you kidding? I, oh, I love that. Um, so from everything from like you import it, and then you like do you do you train people? Like do you say, "Okay, this is how." A fireworks show supposed to go. Yeah. So for our employees, we make them watch the videos because that's important to me is that when people come in that we're actually helping them uh-huh. pick out something that works for them. Right. Uh, and then we have a ton of people who ask, hey, where can I let this? How do, how do I do this? And we will happily instruct them. Any of our employees can tell you exactly what you're supposed to be doing and how to do it in a safe manner. Mm-hmm. So that uh, you can just enjoy the show and not have any worries. Right. Because you notice that, like you said, they do it in like a certain, they start off with the little ones and they do these ones and then they do these mm-hmm. ones and then they, you know, all it all lands, ends right. up to the grand finale. Right. Yeah. I, I pick out stuff all the time and I'm walking around with a Sharpie in my pocket and I was like, you're going to do this first, second, third, Perfect. you're going to go right through here and this is going to be the last one you're going to do. Love, oh. love it. All right. Well, we're going to talk some more fireworks when we get back because like this is, this is so much fun. I know. I love the 4th of July. Um, all right. So stay tuned. And we'll be back with more Power Spot fireworks. Would you like to make a wager on how many fingers are lost this season? (laughs) Just saying. We'll be right back. It's Bad Radio. Welcome back to Bad Radio, brought to you by Premier Couple Superstore, because a couple that plays together stays together. Welcome back, and this portion of the show is brought to you by Liberty Property Inspections. Your home is one of your most important investments, so don't trust it to just anyone. LibertyPropertyInspections.net, helping you protect your investment. Um, all right, so we're talking fireworks with Craig, owner of Pyrospot Fireworks. He's got three locations, which are Longwood, Longwood, Longwood Eustis. Eustis, and Sanford. Sanford. There you go. And um, so, which of the three is the most that it's got the highest volume? Longwood, only because it's uh, Eustis is. Let's see, five years old now, and Sanford is two years okay. old. So Longwood has been around mm. forever. And that's where people first got to know me and started buying fireworks. I, I had someone who stopped by day before yesterday and had been shopping since the very first year we were opened. Dang. And um, No, no, that's what it's like. It's like people uh, know. They were they were so nice about it. They're like, I remember when you were in a tiny tent. <laughs> and, and it was. I mean, mm-hmm. we're, we're so much larger than we started. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was like, oh, yeah, I can't even believe that far back. And he's like, yeah, you had like five people working. And now we got a giant crew in the parking lot mm-hmm. working there, sweating under a tent. <laughs> yeah, that does get hot under yeah, there. I bet. So. Um, that's why it's like the New Year's one's good because it's not as mm-hmm. hot there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sign, <laughs> sign up for the New Year's one. I remember the, uh, was it, when did things start to ease up with COVID? I can't remember. I, th- I think it was New Year's. And I remember going to the tent and seeing people there and it was crazy Fourth, madhouse. Fourth of July, was 2020. It, was that? Yes, it was. It was. So, yeah. The 2020 or 20. I just remember going because people were kind so of starting to relax a little bit eased up as in they, they still had mask requir- mm-hmm. requirements, but everyone was stuck at home for months. Mm-hmm. All the cities canceled their shows. So I, I didn't know if we were going to get to open or not. Actually, a lot of firework companies did not. A lot of companies uh, canceled orders because they thought, you know, in February, March, this wasn't going to happen. Uh, yeah. um, I did not. I just... Uh, Sat on the inventory. Yeah. I was like, okay, I'll have it for another year, mm-hmm. uh, which I was very fortunate because what ended up happening was that was the best year we'd ever had. People were dying to get out of the house and do something. Mm-hmm. So they blew our doors off. I know. I like, I remember Craig was like, I was like, wait, okay. And then, like, about midway through July 3rd, I found out from people calling our number that all of the big stores, Sky King, Phantom, all of the big box stores, had sold out of fireworks. There was nothing left. So we had people driving an hour and a half to get to our place wow. because we were the only place in Central Florida that, that still had product on the shelf. Right. Uh, I was not prepared for that. Let me just say. <laughs> yeah. Now, I remember you were like, I mean, you had to go to the warehouse like how many times? Oh, like- I, it was a nonstop, uh, had a, a, a crew loading up product and bringing it back, but... Even, you know, it, it 
the 4th of July is always busy on the 4th itself. So many people wait until the last day, mm-hmm. which is a terrible idea, but they do anyway. <laughs> and But usually at about 5 o'clock at night, uh, it starts to ease up in the evening, you know, and, and it'll, then it'll just a uh, slow business stream after that. And on that night at 8 p.m., I'm 25 people deep in every line at the register and people just pouring in. It mm-hmm. was, I was like, oh, this is never going to end. No, I, that's why I remember because I was supposed to pick up one of my kids. And when <laughs> I went there to get it, I was like, I'm not getting them right now, yeah. am I? And you're like, nope. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, all right, see you in a little bit. Yeah. yeah. But I do remember, like he was saying, it's like last minute. I think one, right. one New Year's, it was like 10 after 10. And these jokers come walking in like, oh, we're going to get fireworks. And Craig's like, are you serious? Wow. And he's like, we're done. Yeah. It's like, yeah. you know what? I, I mean, that, that the is hell? the other. And I'm a, I'm a little different than the other places in that uh, this was a hobby that turned into a, a mm-hmm. great side business. Right. Mm-hmm. But I, I have another job that I do full time. So. I don't have to live off this money. This, you know, it, it's great money for us for vacations and stuff like that. But it lets me undercut most of my competitors for my products and stuff. And I don't kill our staff. So we mm-hmm. close at 10 p.m. on New Year's Eve and on the 4th of July, where most places are going to stay open until midnight because they want every dollar they can squeeze but in. But then you also do a little thing for, for, for the staff. Like, you know, you get them together and you put out, he does his own. I mean, yours is phenomenal. Yeah. Oh, we we had to stop. Show. But yeah, we used to do our own show. So uh-huh. we did have to stop doing that, unfortunately. Oh, but really? Yeah, just the uh, city and... They uh, got on uh, you. Yeah. yeah. It, it, you know it's bad when people started showing up like two hours before to just sit in the parking lot. Uh, when you start attracting red hot and boom numbers, you, right. you really okay. need to start uh, toning it down. So, yeah, you we, got busted. We, we did. It, it got bad after a while. So yeah, we, we did stop doing that. But we still have like a big dinner for all of the staff and you know we, we uh, they all get free fireworks. Everybody who works for me gets free fireworks. So now they've seen the video. They've seen them. You know, they, they help people out. Well, they get to pick out stuff to take home themselves. Oh, that's so cool. I know. No, like so. I said, the kids absolutely love yeah. it. So it's such a great experience. And even last year, they um, they had some kids from the baseball team. So it was like Aiden and like two or three of his buds. Mm-hmm. And, you know, for them. Oh, hanging out just, together, selling fireworks? Yeah. Well, okay. I mean, for them, they're mostly yeah. the, the, the loading crew. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's right. It's usually the girls that are working right. up front, talking with people. Yeah. And Actually, boys are Aiden, the... Aiden did a great job because when they're on the floor, one of the things we do is we make sure they know about the fireworks because people are just going to ask them, hey, can you help right. me out? Mm-hmm. Right. And it's important that we stock the product when we get on the shelf, but it's more important that you help people out when they ask. Mm-hmm. So whatever you're doing, if somebody asks you, I tell everybody who works for me, you help that person get their fireworks. That's that's the and number one priority. It's, it's funny too because they'll be like, "This is 120," and the guy's like, "Yo, I'll give you 100 bucks for that." You give you, and, yeah. and it's, oh, like, uh, it's not mine to give you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who do I look I, like? Look, a, a lot of places are uh, are <laughs> run <laughs> by. <laughs> I, uh, I don't want to call them carnies, but it is kind of <laughs> when you drive by nice some of these little places. <laughs> yeah, and they, uh, you know, so people all the time they come up and they're like, "Hey man, I'll uh, <laughs> I, I, I'll give you 25 dollars for this," uh, and I'm like. I, I can't. Do, I you're already doing uh, like what is it? Buy two get one yeah, free. We, or no, we buy do crazy good specials yeah. on everything Let's, we do. What and are we, some of the specials? Uh, the, oh god! Right now we're doing buy one get two free on one, all two hundred gram cakes, mm-hmm. on all mortar packs uh, up to a hundred dollars, all uh, five hundred gram cakes up to a hundred dollars. Um, I can't even remember everything else. So, but you also have like the dead free guarantee. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. we replace anything uh, with something better. Or refund your money if mm-hmm. it doesn't work. Because I. I carry good stuff, so I don't worry about it. We we get so few duds every year that it's not an issue. But, I mean, I think that that's phenomenal because mm-hmm. that means like you're standing behind your product. Right, right. Because I can guarantee you that stand down on Bethlehem is not going to be right. We, yeah, I'm sorry. It was soaking in water, but yeah. it's, it's dry now. <laughs> right. it, it is funny because people do try to return product that they did not get from us. Like it's uh-huh. brands that I don't carry. You're like, yeah, no. uh, you know, like, I, <laughs> sorry, I can't can't give you your money back on that or replace it because it's not ours. But I can only imagine some of the characters that you get through there. I oh, mean, I've witnessed some a, of the characters. It's insanity. But. <laughs> so we the last couple of years, it's been uh, ever since 2020, our business, we picked up a lot of new customers in 2020 because we were the only guy with fireworks. Mm-hmm. 
And then once they shop with us, they're like, hey, I, I, steady stream of people coming. Mm-hmm. Hey, is this really this price? And I'd be like, yeah. They're like, I'm, play, I'm paying twice that. Yeah. And I'm like, well, you should have been shopping with us. Right, so right. a lot of people still come to our place. We picked up a, a nice chunk of business from, from that. Uh, mm-hmm. We actually, this year, for the first time, uh, if you go to our website, you can click a link and we have an online store. And you can uh, order online. Uh, we did not everything out there. We put a limited uh, mm-hmm. uh, group out there, but we put some amazing packages that we put together. And then you can pick up from our warehouse or we'll deliver within like a 15 mile radius of wow. downtown Orlando. But we cut that off on July 2nd because it just gets too busy. Mm. But that has been crazy popular this year for people who, because that's what so often people come in and they're like, I want to spend two hundred dollars. Can you mm-hmm. just pick me out something? Oh, nice! Because they're in a hurry; they don't have time to to watch right. all the videos and everything. Uh-huh. Else. So then I'll I'll ask them. Well, where are you going to set them off? Is it concrete? Is it grass? What type of are you at a house? Are you cul de sacs? And then I'll pick them out things that I think will work for them. Mm-hmm. Well, we kind of did the same thing on the website. We put together some packages that I thought were some of our best products uh, at different price levels. So you can go on, and if you don't have time to shop, pick out a package. And swing by, pick it up, or we'll deliver it if you're uh, nearby. That's so. freaking phenomenal. Nice. And that's IWantFireworks.com, right? Yes, ma'am. And there's just a tab on there that they can go, like, yep. pre buy packages. It says shop now. So. Shop now. Well, we're going to be shopping now because I know that <laughs> I'm going to get some fireworks. But we have one more segment, so stay tuned. We're going to talk more fireworks with Craig LaFleur with PyroSpot Fireworks. Don't worry. No free samples in the studio. Welcome back to Bad Radio, brought to you by Premier Couple Superstore, because a couple that plays together stays together. I want to give a huge thank you to our sponsor, Bolts Legal. Fear no storm with BoltsLegal.com. 33 Tanning Spa with locations in Altamont Springs and Longwood. Andrews Law, PA, auto accident attorney. Contact Andrews Law, PA today at AndrewsLawPA.com. And Crazy Muscle Nutrition with their new address at 1015 Unit 129 State Road 436 in Castleberry. All right, we have been talking with Craig LaFleur, owner of Pirate Spot Fireworks, and it's just a blast. Every time, yeah, like I said, you've been on before. Aha! <laughs> uh-huh. I didn't even do that on purpose. <laughs> I have this huge knot in the back of my hair. You can see me. I'm like, keep pulling nice. it apart. You're good. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so with the three locations now, are you going to stick with those three, or do you think that you're going to be doing more as time goes on? Or do you just like let those build for a little while? So I, I would like to expand, but I am... Very picky about where we set up. Mm-hmm. I mean, it took me long enough to open the second and third one. Um, I, I probably will eventually open a couple of other locations. Um, th- the biggest thing to me actually is having competent people there. Mm-hmm. So I Always. have people that I can trust running those locations who are as passionate about fireworks as I am. I want to make sure we deliver the highest quality guest experience uh, that we're every person leaves satisfied. So I don't want to rush to it. I There's a lot of other companies that, that straight up open dozens of tents and then they just put ads out. Hey, you want to run mm-hmm. a location here? And, you know, they'll pay them whatever it is. And it's never very much. I can tell you that. Um, we do a higher volume. So my managers make good money, but I'm not just going to let anybody run a place. So, and, and there's a couple of other people who are interested in working for me who I think will eventually get a spot. Oh, but, uh, like there's like a line. They're like, I want my own location. A couple of other uh, mm-hmm. people, I, I can't even call them kids anymore, who worked for me for years and years, who would definitely be interested, who I think would be great managers. When you look at different areas, do you look at everything from like the traffic to the parking lot to what's the yeah, surrounding uh, businesses? Exactly. The, the demographics of the area, is it mostly businesses, residential? Um, a part of it is different cities and counties and incorporated, unincorporated have all different laws for setting up. Oh, for yeah. A seasonal. So you have to look at that and, and take it all into account. And uh, I don't want to spread too far from where we're at. Our Eustace location uh, is, is a East? trek from yeah. us. It, it's like an hour. Is it? You know, okay. for, for us. But it, it's a great spot there. And we had uh, a gentleman who actually owned a business that was in the, the same uh, Is it in a parking lot complex. as well? Yeah. Okay. In a parking lot there. And uh, a good friend of mine owned the hometown market, which was a grocery store there. And he was a fireworks fanatic as well. Mm-hmm. And he said, hey, I want to open a place in front of my grocery store. And uh, we opened it up, and it's it's been a huge success. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I better, remember better when it opened, year. yeah. Um, 
So, uh, but yeah, I, the funny thing is, is that Longwood, even though that's your number one, that parking lot is a pain in the butt. <laughs> yes, it is. So I, who knew, you know, whenever I was yeah. first looking, you never think about some of the logistics of that type of stuff. And the other thing is, whenever I was first looking, half the stores in that uh, building were empty. Right. Like they, oh. <laughs> so they didn't have quite the traffic that they have right. now. Uh-huh. So. But still, that just is a set, you know, that says how good he is. Mm-hmm. Because like you said, that parking lot is funny. is because the Aiden driving to work his first day, he just got his license. And mm-hmm. so he took a right from fourth, or 434 onto 436. And he all of a sudden realized he had to cut over three lanes of traffic. And he's mm-hmm. like, I'm not doing that. So he drove <laughs> past it, made a U-turn. And he said that when he got to the parking lot and parked and walked in, I was like, how you doing? And he was like, I'm Aww. good. Oh, <laughs> he's like, I'm fine. <laughs> That's fine. Now he's an old pro. I know. Yeah. I was like, you're going to just, I'm like, did you hit anybody? He's like, no. I'm like, is there anything wrong with the car? No. I'm like, you did fine. You're good. You're good. Like, you're going to be in those situations. You're not going to like them. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's going to happen. That's how you get better at driving. Exactly. Yeah. I, so we, we love the Eustace location. I, in fact, I'm considering another in Lake County mm. uh, because there's definitely demand there. But uh, logistically, it's just tough to to keep them stocked and to, you know, take care of everything that needs to be taken care of. So. Do right. they all have the same sort of thing? Or? So it's getting inventory there. I mean, you can only fit so much inventory under a tent. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we'll put storage containers next to it. Right. But, you know, as in fact, I have <laughs> I have an order coming in tomorrow that was running late, mm-hmm. one of my orders, and I want to get that on the shelf. So when it comes in tomorrow to our warehouse, we're going to unload it, and I'm going to send a truck out to Eustace and to Stanford and to Longwood to get that product right on the shelf. Right. Do you and rent trucks for this time period too? Yeah. Like like the big ones that they can load it on and take yeah. it there and back and forth. And so you have specific drivers for all of that stuff. So mo- actually most of it I pay a company to take care of that oh, for okay. me. So, yeah, yeah, then you don't have to worry about it. Exactly. All, all that, mm-hmm. that stuff. That makes a lot of sense. Um, <clears throat> so in the world of fireworks too, we talked about like those those packages that you do, you like they, I mean, are they, they're, they're set up like how I was talking about to where there's like a beginning, the middle and the end kind of thing, right? Yep. Okay, so. so and you said that you just kind of put those together on your own, or like do you? Is it, so, it's kind of yeah, like putting mo- together a puzzle piece almost. It is. So most of the packages that we offer, um, like if you're coming into the location into the tent, what I do is I'll say, okay, with this package you get any mortar kit up to ninety nine dollars, you get any two five hundred gram cakes up to one hundred and twenty nine dollars, you get uh, any four two hundred gram cakes priced up to $49.95 so that uh, they can still pick their own fireworks. So mm-hmm. I make sure that we give it like a 20, 25% discount off of the value of that as a package, but you still have a choice when you come in as to what you want in that package mm-hmm. because gotcha. okay. it, it's hard to say, Hey, this specific cake or the, because some people may not like that, that effect or that color or that noise. Are people or, really that choosy on fireworks? I know, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> you, you would, so People who buy a lot of fireworks are choosy like uh-huh. that. Uh-huh. And, and but you know them, don't you? You I know do. them. I know this. So yeah. We had a person who came in uh, Monday night, and they're like, I want giant gold brocade. And I was like, okay, so you want toxic. It's on the shelf. Let me show what it looks like. And that's what they like. They don't like the loud cake. They don't like mm-hmm. all the colors. They like the big gold brocade. Well, I, I make sure that we carry a cake that does just that mm-hmm. because there are people who like that. And there's others who like, I like one at a time shots really loud. <laughs> okay. So here's your choices for those. I just don't like the screaming ones. I'm not just a fan of those either. Those, oh my God. Whistling, them, whistling. Uh, yeah. You either love it or you I hate, hate it. it. <laughs> there's no middle ground when I it comes to it. whistling. But they always so end much. up chasing you. No matter yeah. what, it doesn't matter <laughs> where you go, yeah. they find you and they chase you. <laughs> Am that I might right? just be you. Uh, that, you know I'm not. You know for a fact that happens. Yeah, it okay, doesn't matter. I've seen it happen. You can like hide behind a tree. It's coming after you. It's just the way it is. And like even those little spinner ones, mm-hmm. like, zzz, zzz, they'll, they'll come after oh, you yeah. too. <laughs> nice. I think you have a magnet. I you maybe. Know, a firework maybe magnet. I do. I've been hit by many. I know. I know. I've been like I I got knocked in the head by a mortar coming oh, down once. Oh my god! Are you serious? Yes. I had Aiden on my lap too, and he was a baby. I was like, "Gotta hit me and not him." But then Tom, Tom and his buddies, they would have like 
um, Roman candle fights. Uh-huh. Oh, fun. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. The things I did whenever I was younger. Uh-huh. Oh, I got uh, I like in the neighborhood, more. like pointing them at each other, oh, like fun. so that they'd see nothing but balls of flames coming I, I, at them. Look, I have people come in and they're like, I want to buy a case of Roman candles. I'm like, why? No. Why? <laughs> why? <laughs> why is my next question? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're like, and the, if they start looking sketchy, yeah. the answer is no. 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 <laughs> <laughs> do you do that sometimes? I put limits on it. You're uh, like, yeah, that's so too much. We we have turned out. I, I try not to. I try actually to talk them out of it and educate them. Mm-hmm. That does not always work. What are yeah. some situations like that people are? So I, I would say people that are wasted that come in. Oh, like, yeah, I want 100%. Fish and I want yeah. that. When people come in on the 4th of July at like after 9 p.m., 25% hammered. of them are hammered. Yeah. And they're like, I want the biggest boom you've got there. And I'm like, you are not capable <laughs> right. of doing oh, any of these things right now. I'll give you a couple of fountains. Yeah, you, wanna, yeah, you, you want know. this cool snake thing? <laughs> How about some sparklers and snakes? <laughs> so. Uh, so, yeah, we're done. That's oh, it. I know it goes by so fast. So, Craig, give everybody your information and tell them where they can find you. Sure. Uh, IWantFireworks.com is our website. It's got all of our locations there, handy maps on uh, how to get there. It's also got videos of most of the stuff we sell and a link to our online store. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's IWantFireworks.com. And you can find me at StrikingBrand.com and StrikingBrand on all social media platforms. And I am Angela, and you can find everything that you need to know about Bad Radio on badradio.com. And a huge thank you to our sponsors, and thank you for tuning in, and have a great week. This has been Bad Radio. Yeah, make sure you tune in next week, 11 o'clock Sundays till 1 p.m. We do it up for you, right? Business at a distance, B-A-A-D, radio.com.